place for nostalgic millennials to feel old. You know, everything I've ever loved growing up. Well, right. well, before we get into this week's topic, just wanted to ask if you got into any uh, interesting nostalgia or memorabilia this week. Well, besides the things I just showed you with um, that Bill sent, uh, I did. Well, actually, I don't have. They're in the box. I don't want to grab them right now. But I actually got really lucky on an eBay lot. I I, I saw um, the first appearance of the Rat King, which is Tales of TMNT number four, uh, for pretty cheap on eBay with um, issue three and five, and I didn't have those. And I was like, oh my god, this is really cheap for for that I- issue. I'm I want to get this. I did not realize it was actually a lot of nine comic books, and I didn't have oh. any of them. Uh, all Ninja Turtles, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Like I, I had one through twelve, and then the rest were thirteen through sixteen, and then um, yeah, it was thirteen through sixteen. Oh, and then the um, uh, Secret of the Ooze adaptation, uh, comic. Uh, for a second i was like they made a novelization of that that's fucking sort of yeah they did (laughs) for uh, like the comic book version um and i just want to recommend i have no affiliation to this movie or anything but i absolutely love it i got a copy of uh the wnuf halloween special Ah, yes sequel it's Uh, titled joseph if you if you could, uh, for somebody, just because that is a more under the radar film, even though it does tie into nostalgia, why don't you give the listener a good idea on what the WNUF film uh, Halloween special is and the particular like setup of it that makes it so cool? I'll just real quick backstory of how I first saw it. It came on right after an episode of The Last Drive In with Joe Bob Briggs on Shudder. Shudder has like a live stream. It came on right after and it held my attention the whole time, which is also important to note because the show ends at like 2 a.m. Mm-hmm. So like this movie came on and what it is, is it is basically designed to be a taped off television VHS tape of a uh, news it's a, report. It's like, it's, it's like a local yeah. local news affiliate. Yeah. Like- we're down at the haunted house tonight, Tom. Back to you for sports. Let's yeah. see if anything spooky happens. And guess what? There's some spookiness afoot. Sp- spookiness happens. But what makes it so great? Are they ha- they have these fake commercials? Oh yeah, that's right. Like, the commercials uh, and all. The, the, Which is, what, what, what is what is the year it's supposed to take place? Uh, 87 is the first one. Okay. And then this, this one, which just came out and you can order it from his website, which is, uh, I think it's called fly groundhog. But if you, if you, um, Google out there, Halloween mega tape, you could get the DVD. He's self-distributing it apparently for the first couple of years. But, um, this one takes place in 96 and, uh, just as good. Like I absolutely love it. And I, I can't recommend both of them enough. The fake commercials are worth like it's just they're they're so well done all right yeah worth checking <laughs> it out if you guys have a shutter uh subscription go check out the wnuf halloween special uh myself this week i tend to watch a lot of old movies but this week i had two really cool ones both of them on hbo max watched the 19 i think 87 88 uh rodney dangerfield classic back to school Great movie. Such a good movie. Parodied in the Sum 41 in Too Deep video. So that's a double yes. layer of nostalgia right there. Uh, yeah, Rodney Dangerfield goes back to school uh, as a successful businessman to encourage his son who... So help me... Here's what I never put together in that movie. His son is, like, odd-looking. He's, like, small. And here's the thing I think I noticed today. He was in Christine. There we have it. More than that. Uh, what I put together is that Rodney Dangerfield's whole business is he has a national chain of big and tall stores, which he calls tall and fat. And I think Mm -hmm. what they're trying to get across is that his son is neither of those things. He's a short and skinny little diver twink guy. And is Leo Vanessa. She gives great headache. (laughs) (laughs) So remind me, isn't the villain in this also the villain in Karate Kid, Cobra Kai? Yeah, yeah, I was just just about to say, because my mom was asking me, what that? What Johnny? What else? Johnny Lawrence was in. I was like, because I recognize my mom once again. My mom's legally blind, so I have to like mm-hmm. she can't remember f- the she all she sees is peripheral vision, and um, so for those who don't, the, yeah. so I have to. I'm always explaining who people are and what they're in and stuff. Uh, what else was he in? I was like, he was in. He was in Back to School. Mm-hmm. I almost said Better Off Dead again because we talked about this before, um, a long time ago. Uh, I thought he was in that, but he's not. It's just another guy with blonde hair. <laughs> yeah, if uh, 
if they had remade this movie in the late 90s, early 2000s, you know who would have been a perfect fit for Ronnie Dangerfield's son? Friend of the show, Dean Bahar. As soon as I made that connection, like, oh, he would have fucking nailed this. And he looks very much like the guy. Yeah, you know what? Now that you mention it, he does. Yeah. Oh, also, I, I love I love Dean. I, we make him. I, he could he could do anything. That dude, great actor. Uh, he is. Another another fun thing <clears throat> in it for uh, two more nostalgia things on my end. Danny Elfman appears in that with his ba- band uh, Oingo Boingo Nerd mm-hmm. Rock Extraordinaire, and in one of the best scenes of the movie. Uh, the son is giving Ronnie Dage to a grief for him. You haven't studied at all on your test on Kurt Vonnegut. And the fucking door rings, and it's Kurt Vonnegut, greatest American author of all fucking time. <laughs> and another thing, Vonnegut. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> I love so that good. movie. Great and uh, another quick one on <laughs> HBO Max. They have a 15-year retrospective on the uh, very big musical, I don't know if we'll ever get into this one, but uh, the musical Spring Awakening, which was very big, came out in 2006, was the world's introduction to Leah Michelle, who would later blow up the country on Glee and also blow up all her castmates who say that she's the fucking devil incarnate. But apparently was not at this time in this weird... Did you ever hear... The... Do you know who Duncan Sheik is? No, I don't think so. He was a one-hit wonder in the 90s. I am barely breathing. Um. Well, I know so, that song. Well, somebody but that's I'm one. terrible with like names of mm. songs like that. Like, His name is this. Duncan Sheik. It sounds like a condom brand, but uh but yeah, they made an entire musical with this guy, and I I don't entirely like it. I don't hate it either. About uh German school children in the 1890s who know nothing about sex and they all end up fucking each other. It's pretty crazy. You've seen hmm. all you've seen all of 30 Rock, right? Yes. Do you remember the episode with the pregnant teenagers that she's trying to adopt from? Yeah. That girl uh, That girl made her bones in uh, Spring Awakening. That's the only other place I've seen her. Very good. Okay. Yeah. It's a place for nostalgic millennials to feel old. You know, everything I've ever loved growing up. 